like Jesus did. Yeah. That's where I come from. That's right. Nazareth was the hood. Yeah. That's why the book says, can anything clean come out of, come out of Nazareth? Yeah. Nazareth wasn't no suburbs. No. And here's this man coming out the hood declaring himself to be a king. Yes. That didn't settle too well with people. Yeah. That's why they wanted to kill him. That's right. That God, here we come out the hood with the righteous word of God thrown into the world, mm -hmm. telling the whole world, everybody, not some of you, everybody, everybody. got to come back to everybody. God's word, or everybody will go to hell that rejects it. That's right. Nobody is exempted. Nobody. 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 Nobody, Nobody is exempted. Nobody. The Lord said, What I say to one. Blessed be the name of God, I say to all. Go back to the book of Romans, son. Let's finish that out. Everybody all right? Back in Romans chapter 6. Listen! And two. Romans chapter 12, again at verse 1. Now I beseech you, brethren. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God that, that you present, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And be not and conformed, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what that is you that may good, prove that which is good and acceptable. And acceptable. And perfect will and of God. And perfect will of God. We want God to accept what we're doing. Yes. Churches have gotten weak. You see, when I came up in the hood, man, you didn't find no brothers fighting like this. Mm -mm. No. When the old heads surround us young bloods, you know, we either slap box or toe to toe mm -mm -mm, body box. So when the old heads surround us, the old heads surround us young bloods, so it's going to be, a, that's where the term fair one came in at. That means it's going to be a fair fight. Ain't nobody pulling out no knives, no shanks, no nothing. You know, so we got toe to toe. Mm, right? Mm, toe to Mm, 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 mm. We mix it up. See? And that's the type of preacher I am. See, a lot of y'all go to them churches where the preachers just say, you're going to be a bad sinner. Bad sinner. That's right. Naughty sinner. You better stop your smoke. Stop it. Stop it, deacon. You better stop. We come with scripture. Straighten up. Straighten up. Straight. Straight. Straighten up. You understand? That's right. That's the difference. That's the difference. Churches is taking the manhood from the men. Right. Have you noticed it? They are becoming weaker and weaker. Face the fact. Weak teaching make a weak people. Weak teaching make a weak people. Water down people. That's why it shocks people when they look at First Church on television or on internet and see all these men. You know you don't find no bunch of men in church. No. No. You find a bunch of men in the mosque. Yeah. Or in the synagogue. But not in church. This is a message that got people from the crypts. Brought them in from the bloods. Brought them in from MS-13. Brought them in from gangster disciples. Hallelujah. We don't care nothing about your background. Right. We're concerned about what you're doing now. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. The only role models that our young people have today, if it's not a rapper, is a sports person. Sports person. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's true. Either it's a sports person or a rapper. Yeah. Because what you find in the pulpit today is not fit for a dog to chew on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The only thing these preachers are interested in is fine cars, big mansions, yeah. private jets. And the so-called apostolics have failed in the same trend. That's right. The scriptures supposed to be a barrier. To keep the unwanted teaching out. But because the churches are becoming influenced now by what they watch on television. So now the preachers want the Bentleys and the Rolls and a ring on every finger. 
chains all around their neck. That's right. They get in the pulpit on television like this. Yeah. Prophet this one, prophet that one, sitting at a phone so you can call in. This is prophet, prophet Silver, the man of God that, 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 that can deliver some type of slogan. Right. Prophet, <laughs> I want a new Cadillac. Just a minute, halaba shata, shata patata. Shata basata, sweet potato pie. <laughs> Amen. The Lord just told me, that, if you didn't understand that, sister, the Lord just told me to tell you, your Cadillac is coming in three days. Ooh. Oh, prophet. <laughs> oh, prophet. Next caller. Prophet? Man, I need another wife. Halabashata, bata bada. Yuga boo, yabba dabba do. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Look how cheap they have made church. Now think of this. If we got brothers who come from all walks of life and sisters, some had a very rough life. That kind of man or woman cannot afford to have weak, watered-down teaching. They need a teaching that's stronger than the life they came from. That's right. If they got a teaching that's weak, then a weak teaching can't cold them. That rough life is going to pull them right back out there, and they're going to be worse than they was before they came. That's right. God in the scripture said he made a preacher a commander. A commander. You need a drill sergeant for a preacher. Yeah. One that won't give you shortcuts when it comes time to walk through them scriptures. I have given Pick him. Pick them up. Go through, the, go, go through the scriptures. That's right. Huh? That's right. You try to skip through. Come on back here. That's right. Go through the scriptures. Go through them. Pick them up. Pick them up. Pick them up. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Teach you how to train. Get them scriptures and jump with them. That's right. Without a good sound teacher, you try to And he's looking at you like you lost your mind. That's right. Let's get Bible for this. Isaiah chapter 55 and at verse 4. Isaiah 55 and 4. Behold. Behold. I have given him for a witness. <laughs> I have given him for a witness. To the people. To the people. A leader. And he's a leader. And commander. And he's a commander. To the people. To the people. That's right. The preacher is a witness. The preacher is a leader. leader. And he's a commander. And commander. That's right. So I wanted to put their Bible foot down. That's right. Don't compromise. Yeah. Don't have no church favorites. Mm -hmm. No favoritism. No respect the person. Yeah. Bible says he that have respect the person commits sin. Yeah. Treat everybody alike. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. When we present our body a living sacrifice, in the Old Testament, sacrifices went through abuse. To be offered up. It was cut. The blood came out. And then you had the burnt sacrifice where the whole thing had to be consumed by fire and turned to ashes. Yeah. Here we are. Being killed all day long by God everlasting word. Amen. But the preacher, if the scripture is called a sword, the preacher has to know how to use that sword. I'm a sword slinger. <laughs> hmm? And my sword is not dull. No. Until the Bible says it's two edges. You think I miss you? <laughs> we'll get you with the other blade. Huh? Churches today have put our people to sleep, and I mean this, brothers and sisters, it have taken the manhood from men until men, listen, brothers, you got a wife and children, you're supposed to be the protector of your house. You think that, all right, let's evaluate this. If we as men are the protectors of our house, why have you narrowed your ability down to protect your family from natural robbers and natural thieves only? Don't you supposed to protect your house from false prophets? A false prophet is a predator. That's right. Remember, he come along and he's doctrinizing your children. He's teaching your children things that's totally against the Bible. How can you protect your children if you are ignorant of the Bible itself? 
You've got to have knowledge of the Bible yourself in order to properly protect your wife and protect your children. That way, when you're in a false church and have knowledge and a lie come forth and your wife is like, praise him, you can say, ah, ah, no, no, be quiet. Be quiet, girl. Be quiet, girl. Ah, no, no, no. Are you listening? As it is written. When you see that false prophet about to lay hands on your daughter and say, girl, you got the calling. The Lord said you're going to be an evangelist. You can step right in and tell him, oh, no, she don't. That's right. No, she don't have the calling. And, and our home, the, our husband is our head. That's right. And, uh, and, and the Bible tells us, he, not she, he, whom God hath sent, speak the words of God. Well, Pastor Jenna, that sound male chauvinistic. In my ears, it sound Bible-nistic. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's why you got so many timid, sissy acting men, all these women over them, ruling them, bossing them. And these men are actually scared to speak up. That's right. You sit in these fake conventions where there's wall to wall women preachers, and the women are feminine, the men is feminine. Amen. Women rule. Everything is feminine. Everything. Women get in the spirit, hallelujah, glory to God. The men get in the spirit looking at her, hallelujah. Are you listening at the old troublemaker? That's right. The word of God says what? Now in Romans chapter 8 and at verse 36. Follow me. As it is written. As it is written. For thy sake. For thine sake. We are killed. How long, son? All the day long. How long we got to be killed? All the day long. I told you I didn't make this up. This is written. Right. What do you mean killed all the day long, Pastor Jennings? The Bible is against our fleshy thoughts, oh. our fleshy feelings, and our fleshy deeds. That's right. How long is the Bible against? For it? thy sake we are killed. Wait a minute. For thy sake. For the sake of the church. For thy for sake. For the sake of the church. We are killed all the day long. Well, for a preacher <laughs> to kill you all the day long, he got to preach sound, sound doctrine. doctrine. Amen. God made me a very hard preacher, very hard disciplined preacher who don't bargain with nobody. I can't be bought and I'm not a sellout. That's right. I've been offered millions and millions of dollars on many occasions. I've been offered Bentleys and Rolls. I've been offered mansions and turned them all down with no problem and don't miss them. Mm -hmm. Why, Pastor Jennings? Because my heavenly father went away to prepare a mansion for me. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. He said, I go away to prepare a place that where I am, glory to God, ye may be also. Think of it. I walked away from Bentley's and Royal. I'm not phased by that stuff. Millionaires meet me in the airport who watch the telecast, shake my hand and all that stuff. And I don't pay them no mind. I had a millionaire tell me, you're really not impressed with money. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. Why? When you, when you die, you, you die broke. That's right. Some folks, when they die, oh, man, when he died, he was worth 90 million. When he died, he was worth a worm. Amen. That's it. We brought nothing into this world. Do you hear the, you see, you see how, you, you see how the Bible talks? First it Timothy. always knocks the arrogance and the pride out of men. That's right. First Timothy. Chapter 6 and verse 7. What is it? For we brought nothing into this world. You brought nothing. I don't care if your mama the rich, your daddy the rich, your grandpappy, you come along and about to inherit the family business. <laughs> when you die, hmm. Where you think you're going? Well, Pastor Jennings, when I die, I got a customized mausoleum already waiting for me. And a solid gold 24 uh, carat gold casket lined with uh, the best silk from out of Egypt. That's right. That's All right. right, that's nice. That's nice. And here's a poor man who died with God. Mm. And here's a rich man who died in, in a mausoleum. Mm. Who you think is better? Mm. The one with God or the one without? God don't give two cents about your mausoleum and your uh, silk. Listen, I don't care if you don't have the silk. You got the silk worms lining in your casket. <laughs> that way they can continue to spin the silk while after you get in the ground. That's right. I don't care if the undertaker hire a whole herd of worms and line them up around your body and give them charge to spin your body and freshly spun silk and then hire a spider to spin a web at the end to make a seller's knot. Ah. Oh Lord. That's some work, isn't it? Some work. If someone dig you up, you're still going to stink. The silk going to wear off. The worms going to cover your body. And that mouth that used to be with the second wife <laughs> is going to be full of maggots. That's right. Mm -hmm. Full of maggots, I said. That's right. That fake hair that you had. 
They're going to slide off your scalp. Slide off. Amen. All the crayon you got on your face going to wear off. Mm. You won't be able to act gay in the coffin. No, you won't. Your hands won't be broke there. No. They're going to be straight. <laughs> huh? That's right. Glory to God. That's right. That's one way you're going to straighten out. Yes, you better straighten out now. You're going to straighten out when you get in that casket. Right. You better it's in mine. I don't care how popular, how known any bishop is. It is written. It's appointed once unto man to die after death. Judgment. You brought nothing into this world. And it is certain. It is certain. We can carry nothing out. Let's see what everybody got to do to get on God's side. Give me Acts 38 and let's close out. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. I want everybody to evaluate themselves now. Judge yourself. Yeah. That's why I'm here in Sacramento. Judge yourself. You see that you got salvation like the word of God says it. That's right. All right. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. And be baptized. No, bow your head and raise your hand. Accept Christ as your personal Savior. Repent and be baptized. No, pray a sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and wash me white as snow. I'm a sinner. Yeah, after you say that prayer, you're still a sinner. Still a sinner. Jesus ain't never told you pray a sinner's prayer. No. He didn't do that. My cameraman last week. Thank God in Florence. Amen. I looked around before I know it. Someone sent me a text. He went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All my cameramen went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to remember, those brothers used to be Catholics. Yeah. But this message of holiness got a hold of that Catholic teaching and burnt it out of them. Amen. 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 Went, went from the bowl to the whole water. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Then Peter said unto them, repent. It's time for you to do this, you that are here. It's time for you to get on God's side and stop playing church. Even you that claim you already was baptized. How were you baptized? Were you baptized? Because if you're uncertain, I advise you to get it right with God. Because when you stand before God, you're not going to be guessing. I guess, I suppose, or I don't know. The reason why God put me in the earth Go is ahead, to let man. the whole world know that he's on his way back. And this is time that he's giving you to make all changes now. That's right. That's right. Just as it was in Noah's day. So shall it be when the Son of Man comes. They didn't want to hear Noah. No. And they don't want to hear me, but the flood still came. That's right. And God is still coming. That's right. I don't believe that, Pastor Jennings. I don't care if you don't. <laughs> you may not believe it's thunder and lightning outside. Then go outside with no umbrella and be like a fool and get wet. Like a fool. What did the Holy Ghost say? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Are you ready to get on God's side, Mr. Man and Miss Woman? Yeah. When you repent, you're sorry about your sins. You got to be sorry about that gambling and smoking and lying and drinking and twerking and cub clubbing <laughs> and lag gambling and here of being a false prophet lying to people. Yeah. Repent. You better repent now. Repent. Do you know the most dangerous location of the church is up here? Right. You're going to give an account to God to what come out of your mouth. That's right. And if you tell anybody any lie after you've been informed the truth of God and they die, God going to take all their blood and dump it on you. you. And you're going to stand before God for that lost soul. Yeah. Repent and be baptized. That's why I tell the brother, stay in the word. That's right. Don't even come out of it the size of a gnat's wisdom tooth. That's right. Stay in the word. Mm -hmm. Don't even come out long enough to take a breath. Stay in the word. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Glory to God, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Genesis, he is our Savior. He's also Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. But the apostles didn't say all that. No. You got to stick to what the apostles say, mm -hmm. the way they say it. In the name the Bible of... Bible said, I testify to every man that hear the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. You can't add nothing to baptism, and you can't take nothing take away. Nothing away. Just stick to what Jesus said. That's it. That's the it. apostles didn't say, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No. The apostles didn't say, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No. Holy Ghost Redeemer. They didn't do that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't add. Mm -hmm. And don't take away. Take away. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Anybody Ghost. Anybody want to get right with God and good on God's side and leave this man-made religion alone so when the Lord comes, you can be ready for him. If you want to be baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet tonight if you want it.
if you want it. Wonderful. 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 All of you that are standing, go right to the back right there. Go right to the back right there. Amen. Go right to the back right there. Even look like I, look like I got a Sunni Muslim going down in the water. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? I'm telling you, everybody got this to do. Come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. You brothers that know where the baptism going to take place, show, show them all where they go for the baptism. Show them all where they go. Direct them all where they go. Direct them all where they go. Huh? Amen. For you that are watching that didn't see, I had a Sunni Muslim here to my right. He stood up to go down in water. Down in, water. in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? In the name of Jesus Christ. I tell you, I got a gospel that's given from God that I take anything under the sun and put you right. Everybody must be born again according to the Bible. The whole city of Sacramento. Hallelujah. We're here for two days. This is a two-day mercy trip. Huh? A two-day mercy trip. From here, we're going to San Francisco. A two-day mercy trip. From there, we're going to Los Angeles. The phone is blasting off the hook from Los Angeles. They want to know, are you there yet? I'm on my way. <laughs> Glory to God. We're on our way. Hallelujah to the great king. Hallelujah. There's not another gospel. Not another. You bear in mind, Sacramento, with Sunday after next, service is here, First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of Sacramento, California, starts right here. Amen. Sunday after next, every week. Amen. Oh, take God, every week I say. Blessed be the name of God every week. Come on back tomorrow. At 11 o'clock, let us all stand. We're going to ask.